It's the Abajai Podcast. Let's go. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد and the next guest a special episode in person with the great the eminence himself Sayyid Abdul Majid Salam alaikum Sayyid Abdul Alaikum Salam wa rahmatullah my dear brother Habib Anbi Talk to us Sayyid how things have you been Wallah alhamdulillah alhamdulillah having you I'm very good my brother I were blessed to be in his presence we're in the office the maktab you know inspiration yes it's for it's for it Sayyid Habib ready to learn to get to know the Sayyid talk to us Sayyid when did it all start the studying the path the travel yeah. a lot has happened in such a short time talk to us say a bit about your story your journey and where it all started so bismillah arrahman arrahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina muhammadin wa ala ahli baytihi at-tayyibin at-tahirin allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad my respected brother abbas it's beautiful having you at my place and Allah is alaykum my brother and regarding where it started for me it started when I was 16 years old alhamdulillah I had the blessing to go and study in Lebanon I studied for 10 years 10 10 years 11 years um, I left when I was 16 I went to James Cook that was close oh, to your school I yeah? went to James Cook as oh, well yeah, yeah, yeah. I still I remember you yeah, yeah, yeah. I vaguely remember you yeah <laughs> Different new groups, but it was yeah, the same yeah, school. Yeah, 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 alhamdulillah. So, yeah, I went to James Cook. I left to Lebanon when I was 16. I went to a house in, in the south. Yeah. Now is one of the biggest houses in Lebanon, and uh, it has a bright, bright future in front of it. And, you know, the history of Jabal Amil and Lebanon, generally speaking, um, we have... Of the likes of Shahid al Thani, Shahid al Awal, Al Muhaqqiq al Karaki, and um, yeah, a lot of respected scholars. Al Hur al Amili. Alhamdulillah, so I went to Lebanon and I studied for 10, 11 years. Uh, I, can, I used to come back every single year uh, to see a respected community, and at the end of the day, I grew up here, I was born here, and see brothers like yourself, Habibi. No, God bless you, say. Yeah. Talk to us about the shock, the difference, because Australia and Lebanon, it is a big difference. It's a shock, especially when I go there. Yeah. How was the living standards? How was the... Yeah, and had you acclimatized, especially at that young age, of 16, you're still... Yeah, yeah. You're still in your youth. SubhanAllah, I remember when I was younger, when I first arrived to the house, yeah, the first two years was really hard. So it was probably the hardest time of my life. You know, I was the only boy in my family, three sisters, you know that. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was spoiled. My, my father, alhamdulillah, was well off back then. And I was a spoiled child. And so it was really hard. I used to cry, to be honest with you. And I used to sit and cry day in and day, day, in, day out for like a year, two years straight. Yeah, yeah. It's not easy. A lot of yeah. people that embark on that journey, whether it be through sport or through uh, religious studies, when they go abroad, it's a different walk of life. Yeah, it's, it's a different walk of life. life. It is, yes, yes, and A lot yes. of people fall off, but you didn't. So talk to us, Said. Once you got into that groove after year three, four, five, what continued to inspire you to pursue and push? Beautiful question. Students, teachers, fellow Beautiful students? Beautiful question. So, subhanAllah, I stayed there for the five. I, I held on for five years straight. And I got to a stage where I felt like, it was a for me personally it was a transitioning level like I thought either I would stay there or come back to Australia I couldn't handle it anymore mm. till I got very close in the first years to one of our respected scholars now overseas in Lebanon Samahta Sheikh Hisham Hamoud which is my father-in-law oh, now okay. and Samahta Sheikh Hisham became my father-in-law because of the relationship we had so we were very close to each other. He was my mentor, my teacher. Subhanallah, he used to take care of all the students. And like his children, he used to stay for five days straight, four days straight in the Hawza and go one day a week to see his family. And he was living with us in the Hawza and he gave us so much time to the Hawza. And it, at the start, it was just 15 of us, now there's hundreds and there's people from China, there's people from Russia, there's people from Malaysia, all around the world. We've got to the stage in the Hawza where it's growing big, very big. And Alhamdulillah, 
So, Samahat al-Sheikh, I remember the day, let me tell you this story. Um, Subhanallah. I was looking, I got to the age of around 18. And we got to emphasize for the youth watching um, that marriage, my dear brothers and sisters, at an early age is very important. It's crucial, it's necessary. Because, you know, someone might hold another opinion. Oh, yeah. But me personally speaking, based on my experience, it was very, alhamdulillah, it was very successful and... Oh, was we live in a hypersexual society now, say, yeah. where everything is available and online, TikTok, Instagram, and the youth are exposed to this. And this is a very toxic thing of where course. marriage at an of early course. age combats that. Of and course. Allah Allah knows best. Of course, of course, of course. So... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on orations, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi the Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa sallam emphasize. Man tazawwaja fi sigharihi, man at an early age, the narrations that say, faqad ahraza nisfa deenihi. And when our scholars speak about a grown man, we speak about someone in our age at the age of 13, 14. So the age of taklif. We, there's details to this. We don't want to go into detail. This is not the topic we're speaking about, of course. But in our age, day and age, a man is considered someone that is 15, six, in our narrations, yani 15, 14 at that age. No. So starting at that, at that age from the grassroots with your son and telling him, Baba, inshallah soon you'll get married, letting him hold that responsibility is crucial. Oh, it's important. <laughs> and unfortunately, society Very important. Turned. More so a negative stigma towards marriage. Live your life, do what you got to do. They've missed the point that it's half your religion because you become a better version of yourself that you can't get to unless you're married. With no doubt. So unfortunately, rather than seeing the cup half full, we've seen it half empty. And that negative stigma from the elders possibly could be negatively impacting our youth. And taken from the hadith and what the Sayyid said and blessed us with his wisdom, it's important to hold on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's teachings and the sunnah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With no doubt. To ensure that we are successful, prosperous, and not falling into sin deviation. With no doubt. That's the beauty of a podcast. Like, who knew we're going to be talking about weddings and marriage? Oh, we're that. going all over it's the place. Alhamdulillah. 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 I want to speak to you about something. This was after prayer, I still remember. I want to speak to you about something. He told me what? Tell me. Usually, I'm not gonna, I don't usually come up to him and tell him. I'll, I'll just come straight out and tell him. I want to, one, two, three, four. This is what I want to tell you. So as soon as he heard me say, I want to tell you, I want to speak to you, I think he clicked. Oh, this, I know what this guy, I know what this say, say in Abdul Majid once. So, Samahat al-Sheikh, Told, told me, tell me. Then I stood back. I was like, please do a khira. And then Samahat the Sheikh's like, uh, no, tell me. No, no, I want you to do a khira first. So then he did the khira. He had understood the whole story. Yeah, yeah. He wants to yeah. ask for my, do- yeah, my daughter. Yeah, yeah. And then I told him, honestly, he's like, I really understood that from how much he insisted to do a khira. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I got married to, married to his daughter. And that, that's, where my, that's, that's when I really started focusing on my studies. And Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. It gives you that vision. It gives you that, that purpose to yeah, pursue no, no. and grow and continue. Because you're not doing it now for yourself. You're doing it for someone else who's depending on you. Then inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you guys with children. And if you aren't blessed with children, that's another test of its own. And that's a wisdom behind that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a struggle, Sayyid. It is a struggle. It's a big struggle. And something that I think that growing up, people should be more aware of is the topic of children and when someone's early married. Subhanallah. Not to keep pushing and mentioning it because the stress that it could cause on a relationship could be destructive. With no doubt. And that's the beauty of religion. It teaches you that wisdom. Not to intrude, not to conspire, not to digest, so to say. Mm, it could be assessment. a positive intention, but you're still impeding into someone else's business. It's important, Sayyid, because the pressure now in life it's you define if you come back from this honeymoon period unfortunately they're expecting a kid yeah 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 yeah. yeah. and that, that pressure puts it on the family 
See, of course it differs. Not everyone has that expectation. There's, there might be some families that tell their, their son or their daughter, take it easy, we don't want kids now. And it goes on for, I don't know how long, 10 years where I'm focusing on my work, you're focusing on your work. We all have a, we're focusing on our businesses. But that in one hand, no. In the other hand, you have some people that, no, they, they insist straight away. I think there has to be, not two extremes, there has to be a balance. Awesome. That balance is when you feel you're ready and you're able to hold that responsibility, let it be on a, on a, on a, on a money, or like if you're able to, let it be if you, you being able to provi provide for your child, for your wife, for your family, let it be on a spiritual level, let it be on, on different, in different aspects. That's true. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised sustenance. So if of it's course. about sustenance, not to be few. Mamin, subhanallah, some of our narrations say, Mamin dabbatin. Someone comes to the Imam and asks, asks him, Ibn Rasulullah, I'm, uh, I want to get married, but I don't have the means. I, I'm not able to provide. I don't have the money. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam tells him, uh, Mam, he, says, he mentions the ayah, Ma, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Mamin dabbatin fil ard illa wa ala Allahi rizquha. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing for that ant under the ground, for that bird in the sky, for the fish in the sea, he's going to provide for his, the human being that has intellect, that he promised huh, to reward because of the level he holds. He, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put taklif on our shoulders. So we're different to all these. Yeah. Even though there's an opinion that says, uh, what's the difference between the human and the animals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave intellect to animals. The ayah, what does the ayah say? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The enemies of someone, the, the ants are telling their, their friends, the ones around them, la yuhattimannakum sulaiman wa junooduh wa hum la yashurun. So make sure Sulaiman and his companions don't step on you. And they don't feel, and they don't, shuhur, shuhur basically means, um, and they don't, they don't feel while they're stepping on you. No. So the ants are saying about the, humans, about the human beings, they might not have shuhur. We have shuhur. So there's an opinion that says, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gave all intellect. But there's levels of intellect. There's levels. Because then ahsani taqween goes, refers to of course. intellect. Then in Al-Kafi chapter of 1, course. Like, you know how much times I get in trouble by a viewer? Yeah. Well, it says you reference the same thing, Al-Kafi chapter 1, intellect. Well, it doesn't matter. It's the most important Yeah, thing. there is a moment. Subhanallah, there's a narration that says, uh, one of them came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, a monk, a disciple. He tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, what, what is intellect? What originates from intellect? Uh, how is it? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa tells him, Ya hawari, O monk, al-aqlu iqalu min al-jahl. So intellect is a barrier from ignorance. So you see the importance of in intellect in our narrations, and subhanAllah, always our narration, narrations emphasize on intellect, and how important, this is a very important element in a believer's life. Why? Because with intellect, you refrain from committing sin. That's very true. With intellect, you refrain from committing sin. And it's very consistent with Al Muhammad. Whenever the hadith come and a companion or an enemy comes to them and asks them, Are you of the learned? Are you of the scholars? Most of the time, the answer is, We're not of the ignorant. We're not of the ignorant. Yes. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So it's, they flip that and then you yeah, just yeah, put yeah. the relationship with, with no doubt, with no intellect doubt. Intellect and not being. And being. No, intellect because it's a pathway to reach infallibility. No. And their narrations emphasize on this. They speak about this specifically. And subhanallah, uh, the collector of uh, felicitations, Jami'u uh, Sa'adat, Mullah Mahdi Naraqi. Have you heard of that book? Not really. Yeah, it's a book, it's, it's, it's a book they teach in the Hawzat, no. in, uh, in the Islamic seminaries. And this book uh, speaks about akhlaq, different akhlaq, you know, that spectrum, and you have two extremes. La ifrata wa la tafrit amrun bayna amrain. So this is a topic within itself yeah. that can be discussed later. 
But this book is based on this theory, which is it's like a spectrum. لا إفراط لا تفريط أمر بين أمرين, which is you can't be over bra over brave. Okay, yeah, yeah. You can't be a jaban. What's a jaban? And a cow. A, uh, or someone that's weak. Someone that's scared, weak. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You have to be something in between. Amrun bayna amrain. You cannot be someone with extra modesty. Yeah. With excessive modesty, if that makes sense. Oh, you're hanging out with those people. You're a bit hard to hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OCD type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wash your hands and that. We've learned that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. COVID times taught us a lot about yeah, that. Yeah, Subhanallah. And you can't not be modest. You have to. There has to be a balance between two extremes. So this book is based on this theory. Some of our scholars argue this and don't even accept the theory. They say, well, being over modest sometimes is something praised. They argue the theory. That's a discussion within itself. No, no, it's, it's it's interesting that these exist, and it's what's even more beautiful is that a marriage helped you to get to the next level and to make things more comfortable. Subhanallah. Enough for that. Subhanallah. So then, when that happened, you now take it to the next level. You go on to 10, 11 years. Talk to us about that period before you come back, because then there are big responsibilities on the shoulder of a scholar, because now it's about giving knowledge. And we're yeah. in the commemoration of the birth of Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. Alayhi salam and, and one of his hadiths says, responsibility of knowledge is to give. Subhanallah, al-ilmu yazku ala al-infaq. The more you give knowledge, the more you gain it. And even we were talking about sustenance earlier. Sustenance is written. You're not going to die before your last dollar reaches you. The responsibility we have is to gain the knowledge, to give the knowledge, to be of benefit to the humanity, society, community, tashayya. Big responsibility. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. not something that people, we might take it lightly. But Imam Allah, this is something that is great. Subhanallah. Um, so me, after we was, I said earlier, after I got married, the stage, it was alhamdulillah, it was a blessing. So marriage for me personally helped me a lot. So it was something that helped me on my journey. And alhamdulillah in that regards. But of course, there's always hardship you go through. There's a lot of there's tribulations, there's yani bala. And this is this is how the sunnah of this world, this is how this world functions. And it's a blessing, we can't say unfortunately, because it's a blessing, alhamdulillah. The, the imams in a lot of narrations, they, 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 yani they thank Allah for the bala that came down upon them. Uh, alhamdulillah, so after that period, after I got married, uh, I focused more on my studies. My wife was by my side. And, yeah, I don't have much to say about that period. That period was just me focusing, sitting at home. You know, subhanAllah, being a scholar or someone, a student of knowledge, on, in Hawzat, it's on a different level. Like in Islamic seminaries, it's on a different level. You have, you're at least sitting in your room for eight, nine, ten hours and unfortunately, people don't see that. People don't see that. Not this is not. I'm not generally speaking, but uh, it's it's a pity that sometimes you have someone that this is not their expertise, and they give opinions in in this field. And on the other hand, you have people that are sitting in their room for years, for at least nine, ten, eleven hours a day. It's this very sad reality of the world. I'll give a, I'll give the viewers an example, a boxing analogy. A lot of people see the boxer on the night of the fight. Yeah. They didn't see the hours and the training that he pulled, the loneliness, the run, and all the effort and the sacrifice you put because you're basically for a camp on boxing. I'm just giving an example. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Three months of your life, you're away from your family. Three months of your life, a lot of you're on a camp. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because for them, their testosterone has to be higher. They have to be training. They have to be committed. So they've given so much, and then you get someone who's sitting on the couch, eating a pack of chips and Doritos, who's never trained a day in his life, telling him what he should have done, like, throw the punch, like, Habibi, into you, enjoy your watching. And yeah. he's the it's not your expertise, reason. it's not your field, you know nothing here. Ah, yeah, but it's unfortunate, in religion specifically, it becomes, it's, it's something that everyone has an opinion in, because, you know... Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, it comes from an arrogance, it comes from not really understanding the religion. Because if I, I never forget the story of Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam when he would go home and he would tell his mother, Sayyidah Zahra, salam Allah alayha, of all the stories that happened in the uh, Majd al-Nabawi. 
Yeah, yeah. And then Sayyid Zahra once tells Imam Ali alayhi salam, we have something that Al Hassan does. It's very cute. So Imam Ali alayhi salam as the father, we miss out on a lot sometimes. Yeah, so course. he wants to be a part of it. Yeah. Al Hassan alayhi salam walks in, he doesn't say anything. Imam Ali alayhi salam obviously is hiding. His mum says, Hassan, speak. He says, I can't speak. There's someone of greater knowledge, greater wisdom in the presence of this vicinity of the house. How can I talk? Yeah, yeah. If we take these lessons, when someone studied like yourself, like others, people have put in more time than me, I can ask a question to learn, but I can't impose an opinion. Of course. We can agree to disagree. Yeah. And I can disagree because I don't have sufficient knowledge. Within Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't blessed me because the hadith from Muhammad Sadiq alayhi salam, blessing divine wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. You must qualify doubt. for this. Yes, you must qualify for this. If I haven't this. qualified, I can't hate on someone who's qualified. With no doubt. So it's sad in that sense because a lot of scholars feel that. Yeah, yeah. and it, look, it's, it's, it is a, I, I feel what other scholars feel. It's a big responsibility having this on your head because you're out there and you're exposed and, and people, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, it's a blessing. We do have, we, we, you know, we, we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing. I remember once one of my teachers, I was saying in front of him, this is, it's a burden, it's a big responsibility, my turban. So he told me, don't say that. Subhanallah, he told me, don't say that. He told me, you know, every time I walk into my room, I kiss my turban, and then when I walk out, I kiss it again. So he embraces that. He embraces it. He says it's a blessing. Yeah. But, like we said before, bala is a blessing on the, on, on the, serv the, the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, when we look at the Quran al-Kareem, the Quran, subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focuses on the human soul, firstly on the, on, on the Quran al-Kareem speaks about various realms, if we can say, oh, yeah. firstly God, then the, um, the cosmos, then the human soul, and then uh, interpersonal relationships. See, what we were speaking about before goes under here, interpersonal, interpersonal relationships. No. So is this Mar before yeah. Al-Mazhar, al, al previous yeah, 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 yeah. different to that? No, that's a bit different. Like interpersonal relationships is the relationships you hold and in this world. No. Is that because we've held previous relationships with our souls and we've connected previously? That's how I've understood Yeah, it. yeah. That, 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 there's, there's a lot of talk about that, no. about, also th about the topic of al Mazhar and that concept. And yeah, that's something for another time, of course. No. It was very deep. And... Yeah, so what we were speaking about is interpersonal relationships, the um, marriage, um, uh, how, how, how to deal with people in society, and the Quran emphasizes on this. Most definitely. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes on this. There's a whole chapter called yeah. Al-Mafiqoon. Al oh, Allah, <laughs> subhanAllah. Al Allah, Akbar, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this, this, and and the, the Prophet had a really, the Prophet went through a hard time with pe oh. people like that. I mean, what a struggle to the two is deathbed. Yeah, to the, the people that were around, yeah, yeah. they used to lie on the people. Subhanallah, and they used to lie on his tongue constantly, constantly, oh. constantly. Ka'b al Ahbar, Tamim al Dari, all, the, all these people that came and started lying on the Prophet's tongue. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. You get people who've seen the Prophet for two years, they have about 50,000 ahadith. Ooh. You know, and you're looking and you're like, you couldn't have been that close with him. You only knew him for like five minutes. Subhanallah, there's a scholar that says, Qad warada indi. Sit me at Alf Hadith, 600,000 narrations, and I don't believe in the auth authentication of nothing but one. That tells you there was a lot of lying on the tongue of the Prophet. But when we come to Ahlul Bayt, السلام, subhanAllah, it's different. Ahlul Bayt, Allah asks, Why did Imam Ali السلام, stay in his house? Why didn't he stand up for his rights? Yeah. The answer to that is. That Imam Ali had something bigger to protect, Asana. which is the Torah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alayhi, oh, which is the narrations of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa It's interesting. Even when he passed, his, his focus became all that. Like all, all that. All that. Al -Bayt, Imam Al Baqir alayhi salam, where, where his birth, his his birth anniversary, anniversary was a day or two ago. Subhanallah. Imam Al Baqir alayhi salam until the day of Imam until the days of Imam Al Baqir alayhi salam. No one was allowed to say, Qala Rasulullah, Qala Aliyun, at all. Imam al-Baqir came and that's when Imam al-Sadiq came and then Madhahib started. Okay. And then they started, like the, the term they use, at tahdith They started 
Then that's when the narration started. So for people and the viewers are finding it tough in any of their struggles in the communities or they're not being able to express themselves, come hold on to the teachings of yeah, Allah. You Akbar. see trials and tribulations. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, you know, really. And it gives us context because we have to take those lessons. It does give us context. With and that health. inspires us that you're not doing anything wrong. Imam Ali, alayhi salam, as great as he was, he couldn't hold in more than five when he wanted to go get Muawiyah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Head, none of them came. Yeah, yeah. So as great as they were, they couldn't get the whole people. I'm saying Abidin alayhi salam, they tell him, why don't you stand up for your father? He tells them, if I had as much as these sheep, I would have stood up. No one stood by the side of that. They were oppressed alayhi salam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So listen, a lesson for us in It's a lesson for, for us. For it's us a lesson for us. Inspired, proactive, and continue to represent them, and the tawfiq comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, of course. So when speaking about the human soul, subhanAllah, we spoke about intellect before. So we said intellect is a very important element in the believer's life. Why? Because with intellect, you refrain from committing sin. Okay? Yeah. With intellect, you refrain. One's something that does not hold intellect doesn't refrain from anything. And we see that. Oh, especially in this day and age, offer sure. We see that. We don't know we see that. anymore. They're yeah. trying to destroy everything. Yeah. We live in an age. Oh, so, some of them identify themselves as uh, uh, recently. Yeah, yeah, emoji. Uh, emoji. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, emoji. Oh, I'm a flower emoji. I believe in it. What do you think about that? I'm a flower emoji. Yeah, I'm best. Outrageous. <laughs> outrageous. I can't believe it. You yeah. Know, and Going off what you were saying about intellect avoids sin. Yeah. Imam Ali alayhi salam has a hadith that you not every day that you don't sin is a day of Eid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you celebrate that. Yes, it's we something that a believer and someone with intellect and wisdom should hold very dear to himself. Unfortunately, sometimes I say the sin uh, al alam. They make it seem that it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yalla, tomorrow, don't worry. Then the... no, it's a big in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a big responsibility. And you have them, they, they, they make it small. On the other hand, you have them focusing on other things like those traditions and oh, what we spoke. Practices and cultural that practices. Go against. Religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, they're very dangerous. They are. And that comes from a lack of wisdom. Yes. That comes from a lack of intellect. Yeah. Because you're not using it to differentiate from right and wrong. And if we hold on to the teachings of Al Muhammad, we, we become Muslim. successful. Alayhi yeah, yeah. So those interpersonal relationships are very important. Yeah, interpersonal relationships are. And it's a very Quranic important. principle. Yes, it's a Quranic principle. And it's a realm and it's a world within itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly, subhanallah, we're in Rajab. No. It's, it's recommended to fast in Rajab. You know that, of no. course. Very recommended. The best act you can do in Rajab is fast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a narration speaking to the, speaking to society, the ummah. No. He tells him, sorry, on, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, so what Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says is So that pleasure when a believer hears Ya ladina amanu when society, when the community, when the ummah fasting, we know it's a concept, it's a ruling, the reason, the wisdom behind this ruling is to feel what the poor feel. So it's, 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 a, it's, it's something for society, for the ummah, no. for the interpersonal relationships. Subhanallah. Yeah. See, the Imam says, ma nida wal ana. So the pleasure a believer feels when Allah, the beloved, tells him, ma nida. Huh? The pleasure a believer feels when he hears Allah saying, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, Makes him forget the 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 tab the 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 the, bur, the burden the uncomfort from fasting. Subhanallah. So then goes back to that theory you're talking about in two extremes. That gives you that middle ground. That middle ground. Where you come back from a struggle and you're like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah, you Subhanallah. Even yeah, the yeah. sinning when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says to call upon me. Yeah, yeah, call upon me uh, with no doubt. Uh, yeah. See. With with the sinning, oh sorry, go on. No, no, sorry, no, no. Yeah, with the sinning, Subhanallah, the human soul, and that's a that's 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 a realm, and that's a world, and that's something Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speaks in constant occasions in the Holy Quran speaks about. See, some verses say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, taqullaha haqqa tuqatih, huh? Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. 
So he says, Taqullaha haqqa tuqate. So this devotion and this excessive devotion. You can be a devotee. Let it be drugs, let it be alcohol. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam constantly said, you can be a devotee, but you can get to the stage of excessive devotion. Excessive devotion is asma. If that makes sense. No, no, 100%, yes. So, Asma, Nabi Isa alayhi salam ala nabiyyina wa alihi wa alayhi afdhulu salati wa salam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says, Inna Isa, Nabi Allah, amara qawmahu an la yaznu. The Prophet Isa, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says, Prophet Muhammad says, Isa, Nabi Allah, ordered, his people to refrain from fornication and I order you to refrain from thinking about fornication Isa Nabi Allah amara qawmahu an la yaznu wa ana amurukum an la tuhaddithu anfusakum bizzina so I order you the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi saying to not think about fornication not think about sin. See, that's that's a level. That's somewhere we can we can reach. We can. Someone might say, "Oh, Sayyid Abbas Fulan, you're living in La La Land. The day and age we're living in. But why? My, our problem is sin. That's most our true. problem is sin. A hundred percent. Even Abu Abdullah Hussein alayhi salam, when he's given a khutbah to the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and he says that their stomach is full of sin. Yeah, their stomach the is full of sin. Yeah, alcohol. Drugs, women, yeah, 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 whatever. So, when you're sinning constantly, you can't qualify for what Imam Sadiq says is the inspiration from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, your interpersonal relationships will be affected. I never forget Imam Zain al Abdin alayhi hadith when he says they're intertwined. You feel like the interpersonal relationships and the soul, yeah, the human soul, spiritual growth, they're connected. I mean, Abu Fadl hits on the on the nail on the head in his final moments when he's Amikhat at Nafsu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he says about the nafs not to be. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Subhanallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're going to say the Jabari, going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to be through these extremes. Don't be scared. Don't be terrified. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're now going to be quenched in the pool of Gulf. Allah Akbar. So Allah. when we reflect on these lessons, and even when we're talking Asma, Imam Zain Abdin alayhi salam has a hadith, Amma Zainab, Alimatun Ghair Mu'allima, wa Fahimatun Ghair Mufahima. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sayyidina Zainab alayhi is not of the 14 infallibles. That proves that Asmat al-Sahra can exist. With no doubt. So that means that this excuses we're yeah, using yeah. null and void. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it, this, so there's a difference. There's a difference from refraining from sin, and from not even thinking about sin. Allah. So you can refrain, but no, there's another level. Don't even think about sin, because if you think about it, most likely you're going to commit it. Yeah. Right. Subhanallah. In the collection, the collector of uh, felicitations, um, Jamia Sadat, I told you about that book before. No, yeah, we just mentioned earlier. Yeah, I don't think if we explain. Yeah, that's a housey level type book, but there's narrations there in that book. Yeah, explain here. That uh, say, Allah Muhammad wa Muhammad, that there's narrations that say that a human being, a believer, can't get rid of the traits, the characteristics he was born with. So if you were born, there's some narrations from the Prophet ﷺ that say that. But our scholars, the, the masters of morality, they say we don't accept these narrations. So the Going back to what we said, Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen salam stayed at home, stayed by the side. He wasn't marginalized. Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen was able to do a lot. Yeah. But he chose to stay on the side. Yeah. For the betterment of he wasn't si He wasn't sidelined. Amir al-Mu'mineen salam was able to stand. Imam, Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen is brave, like we all know. Our narration is one of the bravest that history is known. No, and, and his enemies acknowledge that. Yeah, his uh, Umar bin Abdud, his mother, when Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen killed him, his sister, sorry, yes. stood by his side. Yeah. She says, "Law kana," she says, "This poem, Law kana qatilu amrin, ghayru qatilihi, la kuntu abki alayhi akhirul abadi, walakin qatilahu man la yu'abu bihi, 
So Imam Amir al muminin the sister of his enemy, the one that he killed, yeah. there was blood in front of him, in front of his uh, Umar bin Abdul's sister. Blood in front of her. And she acknowledged, my brother, the one that killed you, was in the right. Because that and her brother was dead in front of her. And Umar bin Abdul was one of the most Beautiful. bravest. Yeah. Hundreds of horsemen? Was yes, it, she um, used to take them on. Hundreds. Hundreds, yeah. She was having a barbecue, mind you, before then. No one had beaten him. Yeah, yeah. Undefeated in war. Yeah, yeah. And before the war, he tells Imam Ali, alayhi salam, he won't fight him because he had a relationship with Abu Talib. Yeah. And Mawla responds to him and says, I'll fight you, you're an enemy of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. And then Amr said to him what he said to everyone before war. He had some golden ch chain where something he had inherited was worth a lot of money. Yeah. He said, if you kill me, leave it on me. It's a family dynasty. It, it runs in the family. When his sister came, she realized it was on her brother still. SubhanAllah. Any other companion of the Prophet, one, didn't step up. Two, would have taken that and, and, and sold it and yeah. taken the... Because they were always fighting for the spoils of war afterwards anyway. That was never Mawla's intention. It was always Islam. And even at the time when he disappeared, they all ran to him. There's a hadith from Omar who says, yeah, yeah. Ali Omar. Omar, sahih. So it's important to, even in your absence, be someone who gives, be someone who inspires. We learn from Mawla, you see in Shak Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was once talking with an elder about Shak Shakia, and I was telling him how sad it is. Because, well, when you have a prickling in your eye, suffocation in your throat, and you're seeing people milking it and usurping, and one gives to the other, since when was I not the first? Well, that's sad saying. Yeah, of course. I emotionally connect with him. Oh. Well, I'm only where you're getting this sadness from. I don't <laughs> find sadness from Shak Shak. Yeah, of course. That's not sadness. We now see in those years, Mola was, it, was, it yeah, wasn't yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah, with no doubt. So we have to be inspired. We have to understand all humans. Everyone, it's not easy. We're humans. I used to think the elders say it when I was younger. Invincible. Yeah. I thought, no, I have no sadness, no shit. You grow up and you're like, well, you start age. feeling it. You yeah. start feeling like, it. Yeah. Oh, number. we all go through. Yeah. Age is number. Yeah. It's just like now we're, we're hitting nearly thirty soon. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I don't think anything's changed. Nothing's changed. A sign of religiosity is keeping a young heart, keeping in tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah. that's important. That's a sign of religiosity. We're not talking about immaturity. We're talking about young, yeah. I mean, you're not hardened. Your heart isn't black. So it's important. So that's also interpersonal relationships. Yes, yes, of course. All connects to what you're saying. Of course, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, 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 See, Subhanallah. On that point, Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasallam. What got us to here? Sorry, I'm. So we're basically talking about interpersonal relationships. Yeah. Uh, refraining, giving. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've gone all over. So. Yeah, we've gone we've all gone over. All we've gone all over. The podcast, I'm telling you, when people. There's so much to talk when about. When I sit with someone, I'm trouble. Say it. Yeah, you take it wherever you want. I love you, my brother. No, God bless you. Subhanallah. So, when speaking about the human soul, we said, Naraqi, Mullah Mahdi Naraqi, in his book, Jami'u Sa'adat, says, there's some narrations that say a human being can't get rid of the traits, the characteristics he's born with. This is where we ended. Yeah, yeah. And... This narration, this narration says, "Yazulu." The Prophet ﷺ says, "Yazulu al-jabalu min makanihi, wa la yazulu al-mu'min an tabi'atihi." So the mountains can move from this spot, but the believer, huh? The mountain can move, and a believer can't get rid of or move these blameworthy, or, or sorry, the traits and the characteristics he's born with. So if you're born as someone brave, you're brave. If you're born as someone that's not brave, that's a wimp, mm. jaban like they say, you can't change and become brave. But our scholars came and said, we don't accept these narrations. Why? Because they're against, we have evidence otherwise that we can't disregard. Substantial evidence that we can't disregard. No. Or overlook that say, no, a believer can change. A believer can get rid of the blameworthy traits he has. A believer can change. That's the greatest jihad, jihad al nafs. Jihad al nafs, which is jihad al akbar, like the narration says. Yeah. Subhanallah, Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam constantly ordered his believers, to, or his, his companions, to work on their nafs. 
the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi likewise, the Ahlul Bayt, ordered the, the Mu'mneen, the companions, to work on themselves. And this is something in this day and age we cannot overlook. Why? Because the reason why we are reaching and getting, uh, reaching problems and going through hardship is because we are looking, overlooking the narrations of Ahlul Bayt and their teachings. It's true, yeah. You're seen as weak if you're talking about yourself. Yeah. Or like, um, if you're reflecting, they'll think that you're mat'asab or you're taking the religion in the wrong way. Because I recall after Mawla had passed, uh, Muawiyah asked for stories. He used to always ask about Mawla, even because yeah, yeah. he wanted to learn. Yeah. And the companion said he was someone who would go, I'm paraphrasing, someone who would be in the masjid in the late nights and say that I've divorced you three times, oh world, leave from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'd be talking constantly to himself. You go do that, say it now. Amma, you do that in the corner somewhere, people will look at you as if you're weird, as if you're someone that's different, and you look down upon. Rather that's than correct, religion. that's correct, that's well, correct. Yeah, once yeah. I was sitting down at the mosque and someone asked me, you looked like you were a bit off. What do you mean a bit off? In what sense? Um, I looked a bit agitated, I looked a bit worried. I'm like, I was in a moment of focus. I was breathing, I was worrying about myself in that moment. It's interesting that you're worrying about me. Mm -hmm. now, like, I, if you're coming across from a perspective that you're caring, it's different. But when it comes to the relationship between the servant and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's of the greatest magnitude. Yes, yes, it's, it is. I mean, the, the Holy Prophet peace be would change color. Al Muhammad would show us and teach us that the way to God isn't something simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, we've neglected that. We have neglected that, and unfortunately. Mental health, stigma, men can't talk, women can't talk. I mean, you gotta look at the seal of the Prophet, peace be upon him. You, women would talk to him and say, she would say once, I don't like my husband, he's too fat, I wanna divorce him. I mean, it's in everything. Everything's on the table here. See, see, see that, that. I don't like my husband. He's too fat. Mm. I don't know. This is something that we have to address in this day and age. Of course. We, we Brother, it. because we see with the, with the, our sisters, our wives, our families are exposed to a lot. Oh, yeah, for sure. They're exposed to for so sure. much. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And if you're holding it in? I don't like your dress code. He wears better than you. He wears Prada, Louis Vuitton. I don't know. It, it is. It's, it's a problem. That's because you're looking elsewhere. You're looking elsewhere. You're looking elsewhere. Focus on your relationship. It is. It's haram. Ultimately, it's haram. Well, yes, it is haram. Because you're now looking at the na'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and alayhi. Especially if it's a lady looking. Well, it happens. Yeah, you know, it happens. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And it's a reality that we need to address. And this is wrecking families. It's it's it's, it's breaking households. It's 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 brother. It's we we shouldn't underestimate these problems, oh, no. and we have to address them. Yeah. We have to. What's the best approach? Say the best approach is to be firm with it. Yeah. Approach it with it in such in such a firm way, Yeah, it's not something lightly. It's not something we can take lightly or... It's not, it's it not. isn't. But then that just comes down to... And this is a, resp a responsibility on all our shoulders. Not just me no, as a, someone wearing a oh, turban or you yeah, as yeah. someone doing a podcast. No, on, everyone holds a responsibility. But that comes from lacking from everything you've mentioned. Interpersonal relationship, lacking religiosity, lacking the teachings from Al Muhammad because then you're deficient. When you're deficient, you're going to be sinning. And when of you're course. sinning, you're going to fall into the trap. With no doubt. And it falls both ways on the man and the woman in that sense because you have to actually be proactive. So it's important in that sense, Sayyid. Sahih. See, regarding us focusing, we said interpersonal relationships with, uh, with the human soul, which is a realm within itself in the Holy Quran, they're intertwined. So the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever he speaks about the fard, he speaks about the mujtama. So there's no difference. Sayyid al-Shaheed, Muhammad Bakr al-Sadr, in one of his books he explains this. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he speaks about the ummah, he always refers that we have to start from the fard. Qumu lillahi mathna wa thulatha. Qumu lillah, the narration says. The ayah says, Qumu lillah. Qumu lillah, it starts from on an individual level. See, when we focus on ourselves, we can get to a stage where we live in a society that you can say there is righteousness and there is, we are prospering and we are getting to that level Allah subhanahu wa wants us to reach. No, but the problem is, we tend to focus on each other more than we focus on ourselves. And we're busy with that. And 
على الاسلام السلام Because when you look at most parents, they'll be saying, your cousin's doing this, you do this. Your cousin's doing that, you yeah, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be positive, but most of the time it's negative because you're comparing your child with someone else. Yes. When you're comparing that child with someone else in this society now, that child is going to be built for destruction. Yes, yes, yes. Because it's hard enough. Correct, correct. You need to focus and correct. work with that child. Correct. Fulan is a good soccer player, you have to be good. Habibi, the kid doesn't like soccer. Oh, Hassan. Maybe he can come talk about soccer, maybe. Or maybe he can talk about religion. Or yeah. maybe he can talk about whatever he likes. Work with that child. I mean, not everyone can be a Hassan. See, Hassan so with no doubt, this, this, brother, this month, we're in the month of repentance. The narration says, Shahru Rajab, Shahru Istighfar Li Ummati. The Prophet Sallallahu says, Rajab, let's speak a bit about Rajab. Yeah, sure. Rajab is the, 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 the month of repentance. And mercy. And mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. See, our ulama say, the Ashur al Nur, which is Rajab, Sha'ban, Shahru Ramadan, uh, the, mon the months of light, no. as our, our ulama say. They say Rajab huwa Shahru Takhliya, to get, to eradicate the blame worthy traits. No. Plain slight. Yes. Shahru. Sha'ban huwa shahrul tahliya. Tahliya is to live that inner peace and that comfort and that state of servitude, righteous servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you know that la yakhrujil mu'min min al dunya hat. So a believer, a righteous, not a devotee, an excessive, someone that's at that level, excessive devotion, won't leave this world until he or she drinks from the water of Kawthar. What is that water, Abbas? Allahu <laughs> Allah. So, Shahru Sha'ban is Shahrul Tahliya, to live that inner peace and that comfort without the blameworthy traits. So you've got yourself ready, boy. Not ho you hold on to Rajab, do it correctly, you get to Sha'ban. Sha'ban, Ahsan. Shahru Ramadan, Shahru Tajliya. That's when the righteous, that's when that righteousness starts to become on a community level, on subhanAllah, we see that. We we see that in some cases, of course, in some countries, in some in 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 the in, in the say in the righteous like the Hausa Almiya, we see that when the, with the brothers up there and the ulama up there and the righteous Hajjaj and Mu'minin that are up there at the righteous at the excessive point of devotion. But when we say Tajliya, is when that starts to show and become apparent. And subhanAllah, sometimes in Shah Ramadan, we see that when the Ummah gets together, it's a beautiful time. It's very important to get together. It is. The responsibility of it hosting is. and giving food and not eating by yourself and coming together as a community. SubhanAllah. It's incumbent. Yeah, yeah, it's incumbent. It is. Yeah. And we see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi speaking about Rajab. we in Rajab. Let's focus so on now, Rajab. Yes. For the Yaqul, view, it's now. Yes, it's now. Rajab started two, three days ago. <laughs> Rasulullah istakthiru fi rajab min qawli astaghfirullah So repent to Allah Takhliya Takhliya Chuck out the blameworthy traits Get rid of them So constantly repent and ask for istighfar Say astaghfirullah rabbi This is the best dhikr you can say in this month Astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilayh as long as I, like in a narration, you say that going to your bed a hundred times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Imam al Sadiq hadith from yeah. him that you forgive your sins like the leaf falls from the tree. Mi'a bil mi'a, 100%. So very important. It is very, Something very, very important. Something very easy to do, say. A hundred times. A hundred times. A hundred times. Another narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says, Man arafa hurmata rajabin wa sha'ban wa wasalahuma bi shahri ramadan shahru Allah al-a'zam Shahidat lahu hadihi shuhur yawm al-qiyamah. The one that knows 
the reverence of this month and upholds it and upsells it and acknowledges the status and acts upon what this month, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him to act upon. These months, Sha'ban, Shahru Rajab, Shahru Sha'ban, Shahru Ramadan, will witness on the day of judgment that this person or this believer is a righteous believer. And they will emphasize and they will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive, forgive this believer. Stakthiru min qawli astaghfirullah. Always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month, astaghfirullah, for repentance. Ask Allah for repentance constantly in this month. Ah, so when we're talking about knowing the right, you even see that in the hadith, in the ziyarat, arifan bihaqqihim, arif. How does one attain that? Because I've always struggled with that, saying, I don't know your right. I'm doing the, uh, the ziyarat, when, whenever they recite, I'm like, I wish I do. But I ultimately don't. You mean the meaning? No, I mean You're the right, right and the position they have. Oh, okay, right. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great, it's a great, even a shahrajah. It's a great responsibility. What are we meant to think of when we're saying that? And how do we attain that closenessness or more knowledge to have the tawfiq to understand it? Or am I putting too much emphasis on it? No, no, you, you, no, you're not. The Holy Quran constantly. See, we believe as Muslims that the Holy Quran and and we and we practice this. No. So collect the Holy Quran. We always, as Muslims, from the days of the Prophet sallallahu we were memorizing the Quran to this day, day and age. No. And that's why the Holy Quran is still around. No. If it was if it, if it wasn't for that, the Holy Quran would have went lost, got lost. No. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala in the Holy Quran emphasizes in various occasions no. that the right of a believer is my is my right haqqul mu'min huwa haqqullah in the narrations no. haqqul mu'min huwa haqqullah see when you understand this haqq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the imma ahlul bayt alayhim salam that they're not ordinary believers. Ahlul Bayt are on another level. No. Uh, so when you understand and look, subhanallah, seeking knowledge, my respected brother, is, I, I personally think this is something that makes you understand the level of Ahlul Bayt See, when you see narrations that say, ulama ummati, Afdalu min anbiya bani Israel. So the scholars of my ummah, and there's an opinion that says, I think this is going to be a bit surprising to you and to the respected brothers and sisters watching. Ulama ummati afdalu min anbiya bani Israel, which is the scholars, the scholars of my ummah are more righteous, are on a higher level than the Anbiya of Bani Israel, yani other than Ulil Azim. No. This is an opinion that exists. Yeah. That exists. Ulama Ummati Afdalu. They are better than the Prophets. And that's because the knowledge that's been given. Because the knowledge that's been given. And understanding, we'll get back to how do you know the Haqq of Ahlul Bayt. All the month as well of Shahr Rajab. Of Shahr Rajab. The Haqq of Ahlul Bayt. Arifan bi haqqihi. Arifan bi haqqihi. Yani bi haqqihi hadha shah. Because they gave this shahr importance. See, the Ahlul Bayt, alayhum salam, understanding their status is something we can attain and reach. How? By reading into different texts, narrations, their teachings, Actually, see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is he saying in the Holy Quran? لا أسألكم عليه أجرا إلا المودة There's a difference between مودة ومحبة It's not The uh, scholars that have a commentary on the Holy Quran say المحبة is just to love I love you Abbas no. And inshallah I, I have مودة to you But just I'm explaining the difference between مودة no. and محبة Mahabba is just to love, to claim you love, and it's easy to claim I lo you love or I love. Yeah, it's true. 
Everyone loves everything. Everyone loves everything. I love food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's easy to claim you love. No. But to actualize and to abide by their teachings and to adhere to their teachings, that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering, ordering us to so do. So does that say like altruism? And that's not ordinary love. Is that like altruism? Like Rahimallah Ammil Abbas Fakad Athra Wafada Wawasa Akha Ubin. Hundred percent. He's given everything. He's given everything. So it's not like I love Abu Abdullah, but I don't do anything, maybe I come for ten nights. I love Abu Abdullah Hassan. I come for ten nights and then I forget that Abu Abdullah exists. The music starts after the music night. starts and uh, it drags on to the other okay, things. So, okay, now I understood it. Yeah. That's so it's the, 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 the Allah subhanahu wa is saying actualize, show that love in your actions. Or else it is not love. You're claiming that you love. You're claiming that you love. Yeah. And to claim is easy. Oh, yeah, sure. I love you, he loves me, or everyone loves each other. Happy but, 100%. 100%. And if that was the case, would we live in a society and a ummah? Or uh, would we live a, in a generation that there's wars all over the place? If that was the case, we all claim. And oh. you see the governments that sit together, no. they love each other and they put, I don't know what they put. And you, you hear that lovey-dovey language between them after when, in the press conference, conferences. But the next day there's wars. We all claim to love each other. Yeah. But do we actualize that love, that, 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 that word you're saying? Do you adhere to what the other side, the, the opposite side likes and dislikes? Or do you just claim? We just claim. We just claim. And this is a problem. It's a problem. So our actions have to now speak. Our actions have to speak. So when we're saying the responsibility we have now to hold on to Al-Muhammad, who then gives the importance to this month and the next month and the month afterwards, what is that responsibility entail, Sayyid? Because they, when we're talking earlier, you mentioned the cosmos. Where do they lay in the cosmos? Are they a light before a light? Then they came into human form. They have a divine connection. In the realm of the world and the realms that you've mentioned earlier, they sit at a very high place. Because when we see the Prophet وسلم, Rahmatan lil alameen. So the world transcends this Dalam al dunya. Big responsibility. Subhanallah. Where do they lay? Ahlul Bayt alayhum see, let's see where they lay in the, Prophet, in the heart of the Prophet of Islam. No. Very important to understand because all of them, all of the companions claim that they sat with the Prophet, they were on a good relationship with the Prophet. But really, in a lot of cases, we don't see the Prophet speaking about them. No. And whoever, there's schools of thought that believe whoever says, heard, heard the Prophet is righteous. Who says that is a Sahabi? We don't accept that. The Shia school of thought don't accept that. No. That whoever seen the Prophet is a righteous companion. Ashabi can nujum, or my, my companions are like the stars, or they, there's a lot of narrations that say no. this. Or well, the ten rightly guarded heaven. And yes, 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 yes. Ahsan, Qatal al, what is in, uh, the one that um, in Syria? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. I can't remember the name. So the one that killed and killed and they were going to be together? Yeah, qatal al Shu. What is it? What, there's, there's a word that says it's on a grave of one of the companions, one of the so-called companions. Qatal uh, al-Sahabi fulan, al-Sahabi fulan. No. Uh, clearly there's someone in the right, akhi. <laughs> what do you mean? I killed you, we killed each other. But we'll go break bread in the Qatar and we go break bread. How does that work? Uh, but it, and that's that's we. I'll tell you if we have a Quranic verse that proves that, and we have evidence from the Quran, we'll accept it. But where does it say? Yeah. Is there, is there, is there, is it a punishment more than that? It doesn't work. It's a responsibility. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, a lot of people like to make scapegoats, excuses for themselves to justify what they love. See the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Let's see Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. No. The daughter of the Prophet sallallahu no. alaihi What's his status she has in her father's heart? Oh. No. She's a part of me. Huh? Well, yeah. And on the other hand, you have some scholars that come up and say, we don't accept the word calling Fatima Ummu Abiha. Does that make sense to you, Akhi? Yeah, I mean, no, it definitely doesn't. 
there's a reason why some are followers of her and some others. For me, I've always believed she's a barometer between truth and, and falsehood. Yes, yes. Because you can't deny her status. It's undeniable. Which father? I mean, we're both fathers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which fathers always were emphasized on the door of the room of their child? Well, Subhanallah. Like, we're back, we're back. Jeez, I love technical difficulties, Sayyid. Never blessed with technicalities. But we're talking about the position of Sayyid Zahra yeah. and the responsibility we have to take from her teaching. Yeah, see, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa like we said before, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells him, tells the believers, tells the Prophet specifically, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil'alamin. We're speaking about this previously. No. So, we did not send you to mankind, but as a blessing to mankind. Mankind. We said before we want to understand, if we want to understand the status of Ahlul Bayt salam, we have to understand the status of Ahlul Bayt in the Prophet's heart. Not in anyone other than the Prophet. No. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi heart. And this, our argument with our respected Sunni brothers, falls right here. This is where the actual argument is. The Sahaba, Ahlul Bayt, it's a discussion and we respect the differences of opinion and we can agree to disagree like we said before. No. The Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ In a narration, the Prophet as well says, الْبِنْتُ نِعْمَةً الْبِنْتُ نِعْمَةً الصَّبِيُّ نِعْمَةً وَالْبِنْتُ رَحْمَةً So, and this is an analogy one of the ulama gives. يعني السيدة فاطمة عليه السلام هي رحمة لمن بعث رحمة للعالمين. So she's a blessing on the heart of the one that was sent as a blessing to mankind collectively. See, to understand the status of Ahlul Bayt عليهم السلام, we have to understand the level and the love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi holds to Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa And the discussion, like I said, with us and our other and other schools of thought lies right here, specifically here. So we stop there. We stop there. It's so true because even if you look at Imam Hassan, Imam Hussain, a part of him, his children, yes. his own. Who should we follow? The Sahaba or Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa sallam? We agree, akhi. The times of the Prophet, the time of the Prophet, there was a lot of fitan. Of course. Abi Hanifa, like we said, says, Warada Andi, sit me at Alf Hadith, Walam Yasah Hindi, Illa, one, two, three, I don't know how much. No. So, I narrated more than 600 narrations, 600,000 narrations, and I believe only a few are right. The ones I believe are right can be counted on my fingers. Crazy. A propaganda machine from day dot. Yeah, from day dot. Control the media, control the people, control yeah, the community, yeah. limit them. Sayyidina Zara alayhi salam, doesn't she tell the ummah, ma lakum? Huh? She was upset with the ummah after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ma lakum? Huh? Tarektum Rasulallah. Nughassiluhu ala sarir. وَذَهَبْتُمْ تَنْتَخِبُونَ خَلِيفَةً You left the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. You left him and we were washing him. And you went to Saqifat Bani Sa'ida. And to understand the fitna, Sa'ad bin Abi Ab... Sa'ad bin Abada. Some narrations say, some reports say, there was a fitna to a stage Sa'ad bin Abada dussa bi arjulihim. So they stepped on him. Aus wal Khazraj in Muhajirina wal Ansar. Muhajirin was saying, We were the ones. We were the first ones in Islam. We stood by the side of the Prophet. We stood by the we stood by the side of the Prophet. The Ansar was saying, No. The Prophet was sent to us. And the fitness started there. 
It was a power struggle. It was a power struggle. Everyone wants a position. And it's like, in, the, uh, yeah, yeah, in, in this day and age, it's a power struggle. Who's in power? Yeah. Who has authority? Yeah, yeah. On, on, let it be on a, a commu- on the, our small community level. Let it be on a different level. This is how it is. It's sad because even if you look at Talha and Zubair, companions of the Prophet to the highest of court, even when you're looking at the yeah. stance of Sayyid Zahra, defending the house at one stage, power comes. And then he flipped on Imam, Imam Amir al Mu'minin Ali. So. Exposes them when power comes into it. Prestige. Yeah, I know I'm not gonna follow this. Or why don't I have a position? Why need this? Why need that? It's a problem. And if everything's qurbatan in then it's fine. Yeah, it goes back to the intention. Niyatul mar khairu min amali, like the notion says. You can have the intention, but you might not succeed. It's true. But at the end of the day, if you have the intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you and bestow His mercy upon you based on the intention you have, that right intention you have. But on the other hand, we get to a stage, we've, we've gotten to a stage where people want to do nothing but harm each other. That's problematic. Harm each other. That's a problem. Someone, subhanAllah, was telling me recently he got married to a sister. Mm. He got married to a sister. And then people started, uh, they weren't happy with the marriage and tr- tried to destroy. What's it got to do with you? It's tough. That's what noises have. Outside noises, why? Uh, look, a lot of people believe their opinion matters. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He created us to get to know one Your other. opinion matters in your own your boundaries, not in uh, some, something outside of your boundaries. I agree with you, say. But even myself, for example, I married my wife from another country. So she's, her heritage is from Bahrain. Yeah, and that's what st- we have when, that stigma around it. You can't get married from money. Yeah, yeah. Some elders afterwards will yeah, tell yeah, yeah. me, uh, you're the Bahrain. Or you're yeah, this, yeah. That. that stigma exists. It's a negative stigma, though. It's something that comes from a lack of what you're saying, wisdom. Um, excessive sin could lead you to that. A lot of things, a lot of factors could lead you to yeah, that. Yeah, with no doubt. You know, you just hit it on the head. Excessive sin leads to not seeing right from wrong. Or you say well, well, don't we have narrations that say, subhanAllah, the, the Prophet sallallahu Yes, we get to a stage where my ummah doesn't know right from wrong. Yeah. They don't know right from wrong. It's a big problem. And we need to find solutions. We need to find solutions. We can't just sit here and speak day in, day out. We need this, we need that for the community. Yeah, it, it takes nothing. It takes nothing. It's an initiative. It's an initiative. What's an initiative? Yeah. Get together and do something. But well, then the problem comes back with say this power. Who's going to do it? Subhanallah. Yeah, it's, took charge, out. it's been throughout history. It's been throughout like history, that. It's a problem. Now there's no. I don't want people to misconstrue what we're saying. We're not saying that you can't have preference, but you cannot be racist. You cannot be selective. You can't be judgmental. You can't. Everyone is able to do what is best for them. Someone's got married. Give them barakah. Help them. You say the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would help Jabir. He would, he would facilitate Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari's uh, house. Yeah, there yeah, were some yeah. things he didn't have. Furniture he was lacking. He made his marriage easier for him. He made sure that before they entered back home, he would send message to Jabir's wife to make sure that food's ready. If they didn't have food, he'd give and send supplies. Subhanallah. He was a man of the people. He was in tune with society. He was, a, he was on the ground level. That's what something we got to do. Yeah, but what matters in this day and age is not what the Prophet did and what the Prophet advised Jabir to do what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi ordered the Muslims to do. Yeah. What matters is what Lady, Lady Gaga says and what, I don't know the other things, yeah. give me names, Lady Gaga or Lady, Lady Gaga or Baba. Baba, Baba. Baba. Yeah, Baba. sure, sure. Yeah. That's what matters. What she wore, what she, what, 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 the, her, her latest trend, the latest trends, yeah. TikTok. <laughs> look, the latest trend is your tree or cat now. So yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's on another level. Yeah, that's another level. We're speaking on our. our, our uh, Sayyid Lady Gaga in Kenkanat when we were at school, Sayyid. That oh, this is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I'm, I'm living there. in an eight episode, Lady Gaga. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, but it's important. And marriage is important, Sayyid. So, something that I've learned from your lesson, and the people now have it's a bit of insight to yourself marriage is a catalyst for great things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you in many opportunities. Yours was knowledge. Yours was going and sacrificing. Yes, yes, And coming yes. back now, inshallah, to help spread this wisdom, spread this knowledge and inspire the youth. And subhanAllah, if you look at the wisdom of marriage, if, you, if a lot of us tend to understand this world from a materialistic point of view, even if you want to look at things that way, marriage is a blessing on you. Oh, yeah. 
Having kids is a blessing on you, on your family, on, on, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the tawfiq. Like we said, as sabiyul ni'ma, a boy gets money, fulus. Al bintu rahma, a daughter will come and tell you, Baba, Habibi. <laughs> Gentle, yeah. But Sabi gets money, gets, 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 builds a house, is able to put you on another level with you, with you regarding your needs and what you need. And on the day of judgment, in front of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you only have your progeny. Yes. Al mal wal banun. 100%. Yeah. And gives you prosperity, sadaqah jariah for the next world. Yes, yeah, yes. Progeny yes. is important. So there's a thing But subhanallah There is a problem I think we have as well Which is um, We have a lot of brothers And even sisters That tend to Always Ta'jil What would you say Ta'jil يعني, Delay marriage Delay marriage Because oh, they're going after careers Or they believe Other things are more priority Even at the age of 30, 35, some of them might even get some to 50, 40. It's because they've been overlooked. Though. Yeah, th that, that could be. A, no, but th I'm not speaking about that. Okay, case. yeah. So I just said the viewers understand. I'm different. not speaking about yeah. that. I'm speaking now about people that deliberately have chances. Okay, that's different, yeah. yeah. And don't go for it. That's different, yeah. Hey, wa ay haq, based on who gave you the right to do that? Who gave you the right to do that? haven't understood the message, the test. They haven't understood the sharia of the Prophet. Yeah. yeah. But my career is more important at the age of 40, 35 up. No, that's not the case, my brothers. No career, no matter what it is, should stand in the face of you getting married or delaying your marriage to an age of 34, 35 and up. It's true. And also the brothers need to take uh, initiative with maturity as well. Maturity is important. when we look at the muta marriage, Sayyid, a lot of the people have given it a bad light because it's been used and abused to the liking of the people. For example, when we're looking at the youth, we look at the people that are uh, clubbing, we look at the people who live in a gangster lifestyle, they'll defend their lifestyle by saying we do halal marriages. Yeah. That then looks, the women look at that and say, look at you doing all these things, living your free life, while we are waiting on you guys to come knock on our doors. Is that not a responsibility that the man has to ensure can, that... Can you re... Uh, when you're looking at the Mata marriage, yeah. a lot of the time it's people... Yeah. Uh, use it and abuse it in the way where a man believes that he's superior and the woman is inferior, they can pick and choose whenever they want. Yeah. And then they live a lifestyle. But so they abuse that they abuse that ruling to a stage where to suit them. To suit them, yes. And a bachelor lifestyle. Yes. Right? That has given certain groups of people from our communities a bad look. Yes. And then the women say they they'll stigmatize them. So what happens is they'll say that these people go on and they do whatever they want. Say the religion or whatever. Yes, yes. So they yeah. live this pious life, but then they're not living a pious life at the same time. And they're so using it's a double rule. standard, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Rather than using it for what it's necessary or what it's there to. See, look, regarding muta, it's a discussion within itself. Oh, sure. Of course. And this is something we can do a podcast about in the coming, in the future, yeah, inshallah. See, muta, we have narrations that speaks about the 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 level and the the status of this ruling in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, Imam, Imam al-Baqir uh, we just his birth, birth, an, yeah. birth anniversary, yeah. anniversary was a few days ago. No. Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam says, Inni uhibbu oh, yeah. I love that action. Yeah. My, some might disagree. Some might disagree, but when it comes to Ahlul Bayt, your opinion is your opinion. But we, ca we can't disagree with the teachings that the holy progeny gave us. That's true. See, yes, like we said before, there is, didn't we speak about that theory, Mullah Mahdi al-Naraqi in his book, no. the collection of felicitations. In that book, he says, it, that book's based on a theory. Two extremes... The spectrum, the two extremes, no. and the mirror, which is the balance between ifrat and tafrit. No. The balance. So you can abuse, you can, you can be completely against muta, and you can abuse muta. Ah, so. But there's a balance. That's great, yeah. Yes, if you abuse it, it's unhealthy. It's unhealthy. Mm. Religiously, it's not right. No. But to, on the other hand, to completely be against it is problematic as well. Oh, of course, because man has those That balance is, it is recommended to do this action, 
But don't abuse the ruling. When you need the, when you, marriage, there's some narrations that say the child of Mut'a is better. But oh, yeah. in all cases, in, in this day and age, my brother, my respected brother, in this day and age, and my respected brothers and sisters watching, in this day and age, no. Marriage is something you should prefer over Mut'a, with no doubt. Unless Mut'a is needed in specific of course, situations know, and I'm cases. I'm a definitely fan of the law. I mean, who am I to say anything like you said? Were you going to say that it's more ben- a child of Mut'a has got more barakah? Yeah, it's said that. It's yeah. said that. Yeah, That's it's said. No, yeah, it's awesome said. Enough. Yeah. No, but I, I love the when you said the two extremes, not to abuse it. Because the problem that I have is the people that are living this gangster lifestyle abusing it. They're giving a bad image to it just to satisfy desire. Yeah, see, that's abusing a ruling. Yeah. And, and that could get to a stage where it becomes haram. Because then it's going to make marrying very hard. Yes, yes. You've gone through a hundred in the span of... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We've got a problem. It, it is. It, 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 it is. To die. And it could get to a stage... I was, I was on board. Well, it's my <laughs> I was like, you have to say it. That's a shock. But no, it's important to know because a lot of people and the women have a bad type on it and you've got to defend it. Because men are different to women. Their desires are different. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. He constitutes it to ensure that you don't go and have desires, relationships with animals. We see in history people have had it. Yeah, yeah. We see in history people have dug up graves and had relationships with the dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God says, no, no, no. There's a way here. You don't go for full time. Well, definitely. You're traveling it. We've got an answer. So I'm not definitely against it, but it's, um, it's good to understand the extremes, the levels, the reach. SubhanAllah, it. sometimes the action of a uh, wrongdoer can be a blessing on the believer. Crazy, huh? SubhanAllah, Sheikh Tabrasi, the author of Majma'ul Bayan, it's right here behind me. And we, you can't see it for the respected brothers and sisters, Abbas can. Sahib Majma'ul Bayan had a health problem back in the days and they buried him Mm. they thought he was dead they announced him dead he's dead so they buried him and he woke up in the grave he did a nimus yeah 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 nimus 100 (laughs) (laughs) he woke up in his grave subhanallah back then there was people uh, known as fornicators that dig graves and have and commit fornication with the dead. So then, subhanallah, someone dug his grave, and then when he was in the grave, Sheikh Tabrasi promised Allah, If I get out of this grave, I promise I'm going to write a collection of tafsir. A commentary on the Holy Quran. And he did that. He wrote a commentary on the Holy Quran. But don't ask me where the other person is. Yeah, no. He's in the lowest levels of hell, of course. Yeah. What have been the only good thing he's ever done? Though? Yeah. Have you, I've, I've heard the story, I can't remember, this is a terrible one, of Ibrahim the Sarra, who goes on a ziyara trip. The Imam says to take it. It's, I've butchered the story. I can find anyone in the comments. If I mention a story, say it in the comments. They want a reference. <laughs> I'll find it for them. Don't worry, it's alright. At the moment, I don't have the reference. If you're going to hate on me, I'll send it in the comments. Long story short, the imam tells a Hamli owner, I don't know which imam, but I'll definitely... Take the moral of the story. The moral yeah, of the story. Yeah. Tells a Hamli owner to make sure Brahim the Sarrat comes with him. So, I'm sure Brahim, I'm going to take Brahim the Sarrat with me. He goes, no, no, no. The next day, he goes, Allah, you know what? You're coming to me, Ziyara, Brahim. Gaya for Brahim. Long story short, back in the day, there were highway thieves. Even if you know Bani Ghafar, uh, that's where Abu Bar comes from, his tribe, the highway thieves. Yeah. So they, they go on to Ziyara to do a Ziyara, and they get the caravan of this Hamlet get attacked by the highway thieves. Long story short, afterwards, all the supplies, the gold, the money, had been gone, right? And everyone in the Hamlet is very saddened. As you know, back then traveling was harder. Yeah. Except for one man, Brahim al Sarra. He's like to him, the Hamlet owner is like to him, listen, I'll bring you here, we're all saddened except for you. Why aren't you certain? He's like, Wallah, Hamli Aina, Fulan, I forgot his name, if his name was mentioned in the book. He's like, they were stealing from them. He, this way, I was stealing from them. Your supplies are all here. <laughs> he says, Marshal. Yeah, yeah, The that. Imam I'm told sure. me to yeah. bring you. How the sabu? Yes, yes, subhanAllah. And then he goes to him, the Imam told you to take Ibrahim al Sarah, and then he, would, he, he, he felt very sad. Yeah, he was the Imam astonished. Told me as yeah. the thief. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a lesson. SubhanAllah. It's a lesson for us to take on, and it's very important. 
for us to hold on to the teachings and the message, continue but supporting before, the Sayyid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. were you saying, sorry, Sayyid? Yeah, so we were saying about the, we don't know where the other guy that yeah, 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 uh, dug the grave where he is. But before we wrap up, yeah. I think we should emphasize our brothers and sisters focus in this month no. this is these three months are the months of spiritual growth my respected brothers and sisters so i think it's crucial and necessary we focus on fasting fasting is one of the best ways you can self-discipline yourself see like we said before لَذَّةُ مَا فِي النِّدَاءِ أَذْهَبَ بِالتَّعْبِ وَالْعَنَاءِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling the believers يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Oh, you who, who believe. Oh, you who believe. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ We have obliged, obliged the fasting upon you. The Prophet says, Allah speaking to the believers as his beloved, that made the believers forget the 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 tahab, the, the the harm and the the and the, the hardship of fast. Yes. So Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, very important and fasting being in that state of spiritual and depriving yourself of food and water brings you a barakah. You look at Nabi Allah Musa when he receives a tablet, he was in a state of fasting. You look at the Prophet ﷺ when he receives a divine revelation, the Holy Quran is revealed in the time of fasting. Yeah, yeah. So it's very important. There's, there's a big emphasis on fasting, the health benefits, every other benefit, and ridden and getting rid of all these bad things that we've done. Subhanallah, yeah, of course, of course. It's, it's, it's a time we can self-cleanse and focus on ourselves. and. Sam. And these three months, my respected brothers and sisters, it is a time we should focus on ourselves. And let go. Let go. Let Very go. True. Try to change our, our, our habits and our, our... What's the hack, say? The fasting hack from Muhammad Sadiq, alayhi salam, to bring benefit and barakah. If it's a mustahab fast, can yeah. you not invite your brother or sister? Yeah, about that, we, um, we do have narrations that, says it's, that say it's mustahab. It's, it's, it's recommended to accept when you're fasting a recommended prayer, a recommended fast, to accept when someone invites you to something. From an akhlaqi perspective, very important. Because yeah. it's mustahab. It's, it's not mustahab. wajib. We're not talking about No, wajib. it's not wajib. Yeah, well, not qada. Yeah, qada yeah, ones yeah. you have to complete. And All the psalm wajib, shahar Ramadan, for example. Most yeah. definitely. Yes, yes. Now, inshallah, very important. Say it before we wrap up. Mi'raj, Quranic lessons. You're starting the school back again. Alhamdulillah, inshallah. We, yeah. How are they going to get behind it? What's happening to all the people? So alhamdulillah, till now, it's been like a week and a half. A week and a half mm. since we put the flyer up. We have 60 students. Alhamdulillah, wow. Um, we're aiming, the most we can hold and handle is 72. So we'll stop at 72. No. It's going to be in Banksia. And in Bankstown, two days in Banksia, Monday and Wednesday in Banksia, and Tuesday and Thursday in Bankstown. That's in Prince Hawaii, Sayyidah Zainab? Yes, Sayyidah Zainab, okay. Islamic Center. Beautiful. Sayyidah and Sayyidah what about the elders, people like myself? Parents. Inshallah, regarding the elders, we are planning on facilitating for them and starting classes for them. Let it be Hawza studies, right. let it be Quranic studies, let it be... On the different, different, in different fields, يعني مناهج التفسير, the exegesis of tafsir, this is very important. The the علم الأصول to teach أصول for the brothers that really want to understand their religion really well and go delve deep into the teachings of our ulama. Yeah. And there's a lot more to say about that. Yes, stay tuned. Inshallah, stay tuned with Abbas. No, no, no. We're young, old. Get behind the side. Understand the message. Inshallah, we hold on to the teachings of Muhammad wa al Muhammad. Allahumma salla ala 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 Muhammad. Allahum